from the convex mirror will not meet at a point in front of the mirror. We will always get a virtual and erect image by the convex lens. Hello students, welcome back. If you happen to travel at night in a car or bike, you might have observed that the light from the headlamps of vehicles folds like a beam. Similarly, a beam of light can be seen from a torch and a lighthouse. From these examples, we can conclude that light travels in a straight line. If you try to look at a lighted candle through a bent pipe, you will not be able to see the light from the candle. The reason is that light travels in a straight line. Let's see how we can change the path of the light. If we let light fall on a shiny surface, we can change the path of light. In your previous classes, you might have learned that we can change the direction of light by a mirror. This change of direction of light by a mirror is called reflection of light. Water surface can act as a mirror and reflect light. This is the reason we can see the reflection of trees and even our faces in water. Let's do some activities to learn more about the reflection of light. Take a torch and cover its glass with a chart paper. Put three slits in the chart paper. We make these slits so that the light will come through the slits as three rays. Take a wooden board and spread a chart paper on it. Now fix a plain mirror vertically on the chart paper. Now switch on the torch. And we can see that the three beams of light come through the slits. The light from the torch now falls on the mirror. Adjust the position of the torch in such a way that the light strikes the mirror at an angle. We can see the mirror changes the direction of light. Here the mirror reflects the light that falls on it. This is a mirror here and the light that falls on it is called the incident ray. And this is the ray of light reflected from the mirror. This is called reflected ray. This is a normal we draw here and this is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of reflection. The angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. We can see ourselves in the mirror if there is light in the room. The light that falls on us get reflected and falls on the mirror. This light once again reflects and falls on our eyes. Thus we can see our image in the mirror. But in the dark we cannot see the image in the mirror because there is no light source at all. Let's learn more about the plain mirror. We have already learned how our image is formed in the mirror. But have you ever wondered if whenever we look in the mirror, the image appears to be behind the mirror? Let's understand why. Imagine this as a mirror. When we stand in front of the mirror, multiple rays falls on the mirror and get reflected. But these reflected rays are moving away and will never meet each other. But when we draw lines from these reflected rays, they will meet at a point behind the mirror. And here is the place where the image is formed. The light from the head meets here and the image of the head is formed here. But in reality, nothing is behind the mirror. Hence, this is a virtual image. Virtual means which does not physically exist. In plain mirrors, the image formed are virtual and hence they appear to be behind the mirror. The image formed on a plain mirror is the exact copy of the object. The size and shape of the object never changes. The distance of the object from the mirror, this distance, distance of the object from the mirror and the distance of the virtual image from the mirror, they are equal in case of a plane mirror. That is why if we place an object away from the mirror, the image is also seems to be pushed back. The image formed on a plane mirror is always erect. These are the reasons why we use plain mirrors in our homes so that we can see an image which is of the same size 
shape as ours. If we place a screen over here, this is a screen and try to get an image on the screen, we will not succeed as the image formed in the plane mirror is always virtual. If you stand in front of a plane mirror and raise your right arm, the image appears to raise its left arm. Have you ever wondered why? The images that we see in plane mirror are left right inverted. This left right inversion is called lateral inversion. Lateral means sideways and inverted means reversed. Let's understand how this lateral inversion happens. Does the mirror really flip things? No, it's not. Here is a wooden rod which has one end painted red and the other end green. Let's place this in front of a mirror. The red side of the rod is placed near to the mirror and in the image also the red side is placed near to the mirror. The green side of the rod is away from the mirror and the same is in the case of the mirror. That means the front and back of the object are inverted in the mirror. If the front and back are not reversed, then the image will also show red in front and green in back. But it is not the case. If the front and back are inverted here, then obviously the left and right sides are also inverted. We see just the opposite of the object in the mirror. This is the reason behind lateral inversion. We often see an example of lateral inversion in our daily life. Have you ever wondered the word ambulance is written in inverted manner on the vehicles? The drivers see other vehicles through the rear view mirror, right? So they can read the word ambulance written on the vehicle if it is written in an inverted manner due to the lateral inversion and they can give a way for the ambulance. Moving on to spherical mirrors. Have you seen curved mirrors? A steel spoon is an example of a curved mirror. The inside of the spoon is curved inward and the outside is curved outward. This inwardly curved mirror is called a concave mirror and an outwardly curved mirror is called a convex mirror. These are commonly called spherical mirror. But why are they called spherical mirrors? Because they are a part of the sphere. This is a part of the sphere. Same thing applicable here also. This is a part of a sphere. To understand this better, let's take a rubber ball and cut it. We will get a small piece from the ball in which the inner side is concave and the outer side is convex. But this piece is a part of the sphere ball, right? Similarly, curved mirrors are a part of the spheres. Now let's do another activity. Take a concave mirror and hold it facing the sun. Try to get the light reflected by the mirror on a sheet of paper. Adjust the distance of the paper until we get a sharp bright spot on it. If we hold the sheet of paper steady for a few minutes, the paper will start burning due to the heat reflected from the sun. A concave mirror focuses the parallel sun rays at a point of the mirror. This is the reason why the paper burns. Here we can form an image on a screen and hence we can call the image a real image. We have already learned that the image formed by the plane mirror cannot be obtained on a screen and hence the image is a virtual image. But the image formed by a concave mirror is a real image. The real image formed by a concave mirror is inverted. We learned that the virtual images are erect but the real images are inverted. The image formed by a concave mirror will be a real image and hence it is inverted and is smaller or larger than the object. Let's see why the images are inverted. We saw in case of plane mirror that these are the incident rays and these are the reflected rays and this reflected rays will not meet at a point. They will go away from each other. 
but in case of concave mirror the reflected rays meet at a point in front of the mirror the reflected ray from the top is reflected downward and the ray from the bottom is reflected upward these rays meet at a point and form an inverted image in front of the concave mirror if the object is moved towards the mirror then the image formed will be real inverted and diminished if the object move closer to the mirror then the image will be real enlarged and inverted but if the object comes still closer the image formed will be virtual erect and enlarged Concave mirrors are used by doctors for examining the eyes, ears, nose and throat. Dentists use concave mirrors to see an enlarged image of the teeth. The reflectors of torches, headlights of cars and scooters are concave. Shaving mirrors are concave mirrors as the image formed by them is always erect and magnified when the object is placed close to the mirror. Now let's see what is the case with convex mirror. The reflected rays from the convex mirror will not meet at a point in front of the mirror. We will always get a virtual and erect image by the convex lens and the image will not be obtained on a screen. The size of the object is always small when compared to the object regardless of the position of the object. The size of the object will always be small. The mirrors used on the sides of the vehicles are convex mirrors. Convex mirrors can form images of objects spread over a larger area. This will help the drivers to see the traffic behind them. You might have heard about the magnifying lens. A magnifying lens is used to read very small prints or body parts of small insects. Lenses are used in spectacles, telescopes and microscopes. There are mainly two types of lens, convex lens and concave lens. Those lenses which feel thicker in the middle than at the edges are convex lens. Those lenses which feel thinner in the middle than at the edges are called concave lens. Let's do an activity. Take a convex lens, put it in the path of the sunlight. Place a paper under the lens. Let's adjust the distance between the lens and the paper till we get a bright spot on the paper. Hold the lens and the paper in this position for few minutes. And we can see the paper starting to burn. This is because the convex lens concentrates and converges the light at a point so that the heat energy accumulates at a specific point. As the heat increases, the paper will start to burn and hence the convex lens is also called converging lens. Here you can see the convex lens is converging the light at a point. On the other hand, we cannot burn paper by using a concave lens because the concave lens will always diverge the light rays that are falling on it. Hence the heat cannot accumulate at one point. The concave lens is also called diverging lens. When the object is placed very close to the convex lens, the image formed is virtual, erect and magnified. When the object is placed far away, then we will get a real and inverted image. When the object is placed close to the convex lens, we will get a virtual and magnified image and this helps to read small letters by using convex lens. The concave lens always forms an erect virtual and smaller image than the object. 
all of us enjoy a rainbow in the sky and we are all aware that there are seven colors in the rainbow red orange yellow green blue indigo and violet vibjo we call the sunlight white light let's see if the white light contains any other color in it take a glass prism allow a narrow beam of sunlight through a small hole in the window of a dark room to fall on one face of the prism let the light coming out of the prism on the other side fall on a white sheet we can see colors similar to the rainbow from this we can conclude that the sunlight contains seven colors and together these colors appear as white hence we call the sunlight a white light that's it about the chapter light if you like this video please share it with your friends if you have any queries put it in the comment box thank you